All right, everybody, what's going on? You're watching Behind the Counter. My name is Rich Stambolian, and with me, as always, is my advocating Jew, Jonathan Adler. That's me. I'm the Jew. That's not offensive to you, right? No. Good. No. And you can't teach that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying that all week. It's spill. It's gonna. You're gonna have the two minute wrestling spill over, but um, it's the uh, the come down. The come down. <laughs> it's like the after show is the come down. <laughs> that's what the uh, that's what the Lex Steel job is called. The come down. <laughs> Come down, come um, down. What's going on, man? Not a whole lot, man. Yeah. Huge week in comic book news this week. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nothing really happened. No, it's been like the the most. I I looked over there, you know, the news I usually do when I wake up this morning. I check the news and I go back to the archives. Mm-hmm. But like the most outrageous thing is that we have a the 50th anniversary of Titans, Teen Titans coming, and wow. uh, DC is doing like 50 years. That's crazy. And DC is doing nothing about it. Well, why should they? You know, it's not like they make comics. And it kind of lamented. I kind of got really pissed off about it. I, I don't know why. I mean, I, I guess because I read Teen Titans so much as a kid. Mm. But there's nothing identifiable with that company that I 50 really. 50 years? 50 years. You remember, you remember, like, it came out uh, with, like, Donna Troy, Old School Speedy, Original Robin. And it was, like, still, like, I don't remember who drew it, but it was still, like, sensation comic style. It yeah, was yeah, still, yeah. like, wacky and weird stuff. Uh, but it really made me lament for like all the stuff that we no longer have in DC. Like, what pulls me in? I'm psyched for multiversity next week, though. I'm excited about that. Um, uh, yeah, DC does weird things to you because, like, all right, for example, like Superman. Mm. I'm really enjoying the Superman comic that's yeah. written by Johns, right? Yeah. And but it has also nothing to do with Anything. the the Super Doom that's happening, which I think is is ridiculous. Super Doom. Uh, the other the when Superman turns into yeah. Doomsday. And um, the other thing that I find interesting is that yet they will celebrate, they will shove the 75th anniversary of Batman down his throat after every page. Oh, with yeah. everything. You know, it was like Batman Day declared, it was declared like a month ago. Uh, yeah, I, I got like a bunch of free Batman stuff. It's just like catalogs or DC Direct. And they're putting out like a lot of cool stuff, but it's it sucks that you can't get that for, for a franchise like the Titans or like any other like secondary anniversary. We had the 75th Superman. I think like last year, yeah, the year before, um, but yeah, man, it's not a, uh, not looking good, no, not looking good, it's not. and it's really it's 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 sad because I was reading I'm reading uh, I, I just caught up on Batman Eternal, mm-hmm. which is the weekly Batman book, uh, and it's not as bad as it started out. Yeah, I'm I'm up to like issue six, and I'm like, you know what, I'm kind of decent, kind of with it, yeah. yeah, and I'm I caught up on uh, Future's End. The other weekly DC book, mm. uh, which is it's just like the the thing that I'm sticking around for, and this is what how everyone gets me is give me a mass character yeah. uh, at the beginning of the story. I'll stick around until you tell me what it is. Like yeah, I would have stuck around with Mighty, Mighty Avengers, uh, you know, the Black uh, Avengers book, Ronan. Yeah, yeah I would have stuck around if that wasn't revealed that Ronan was Blade. Okay, uh, but with this, like, I know who the guy's gonna be. It's definitely going to be end up being Booster Gold, which is the same thing that you did in the old Fifty Two, yeah. another weekly comic yeah. book from DC. The fix is coming. Don't worry about it. The fix is in. You think it's really co- coming? I think so. I think I think it's gotten to the point where like they invested so much into this relaunch that fans like us like still just cannot stand it. No, we've been talking yeah. about it for years now, over two years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a lot of fans that I've talked to, well, I think that's the thing. You know, like we're not the demographic anymore. You know, yeah, I guess. Um, we're the Marvel demographic for the most part. We're definitely the image demographic, but but Marvel's doing all the right things in terms of promoting their product. Yes, I mean they they have fully embraced digital, mm-hmm. which is the future of comics, um, while still embracing the legitimacy of like a brick and mortar comic book store yeah. by offering the, the exclusives and like the the, mm-hmm. the watcher eyeballs and getting them involved. DC just seems like this very like dumb mm-hmm. corporate dude. Just saying, like, no, why we don't need a we don't need a Superman. Yeah, I guess so. It's so Superman about him, <laughs> but it's just like I don't know. It's weird. Well, yeah, take it easy, homie. I think it's too much. Uh, it's too much statistics. Also, the dog's getting weird. Jessica's not around. I know. I'm not Jessica. Are you not taking care of your dog? I am. He doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't None care of your animals care. care. You have the you have the most over it menagerie of of household pets I've ever yeah. seen. They just, I'm over all of it. They <laughs> don't care. They're just like, whatever, man. John also said that this is not a real house, and it's like a sh- model home. Yeah, man. There's no paper goods in here. No. Did uh, you see the setup table for dinner? Yeah, there's a fake table. We've never ate there. There's never any water. 
Never or anymore. No, the Warriors thing doesn't work. I think your brothers are like two Westworld robots, <laughs> like walking around. <laughs> they just work here. <laughs> just cleaning, man. Um, this brothers are Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's kind of strange. It's 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 really strange, and like we're I don't think we're demographic anymore. I think it's like they know it's it's definitely it it goes back to the in my head that Grant Morrison Black Suit Man issue where the the basic point of the issue was like it doesn't matter what you say is Superman, but if it's su- if it's something Superman, it will sell. Yeah, no matter what, you yeah. know, people will buy this no matter what. I Are almost, people still into Superman though? Like, see, that, I gotta argue that because I really don't think so. I think if you it's Batman, it'll go over no matter what. Mm-hmm. I think Superman has got much more stigma over the years than, and I, I think it's deservingly so because he was the big focus for so long. But to the average person, Superman is more identifiable. Do you think so than I Batman? Think so. I, I think don't think so. I think it's like, oh, everybody knows who Superman is. People have been more exposed to Superman during the course of their life. Maybe the old generation. I think mm-hmm. you had like Superman everything. Like Superman transcended and became like, you know, like there's a, a plumber not too far away from my house, but I knew your house too, mm-hmm. that has like the Superman symbol on his car like yeah. for his business. Uh, you know, guys who have never read a Superman comic in the world have Superman tattoos. Right. Yeah. Uh, but at the same Superman. time, these kids who are growing up with like, you know, a9 Batman, mm-hmm. you know, uh, all the other incarnations, the awesome Batman Begins stuff, Batman toys, kids immediately love Batman. True. Yeah. Batman. Superman is like, I I can't see a kid like picking up Superman. Well, maybe now with the movies and everything, he'll have a better chance, but I can't see a kid going to a toy store and looking at a, a selection of action figures and not pick up a Superman over a Batman. I think okay. if he's gonna go for that, if it's a little kid, he'll go for the color scheme. He'll go for Captain America. Okay. <laughs> like I gave, I gave uh, my friend Paul mm-hmm. uh, like a pile of figures to for uh, for his kid, and the first one he picked out was Captain America. Okay. Loved it. Unmasked Captain America, Marvel Legends. Because he's he's the he's the Uberman. He's a patriot. <laughs> uh, what else was going on this week? Um, I don't know, man. It's been slow. There's, you know, there's a, uh, we're about to hit another Marvel crossover. Oh, yeah. And uh, Access, mm-hmm. which we, oh, so we can talk about that. They kind of let the the cat out of the bag in terms of where they're going with the Access storyline, which is the new mm-hmm. Avengers X-Men big crossover. Uh, all villain based, blah, blah. Um, but they're inverting every character. So every character, because of Red Skull, is going to, Invert not just bad and good, but like their entire person is uh, switched. So they use like the icons, uh, the, like five different characters to show like how different they are. So they showed Deadpool becomes like a peace loving like mm-hmm. monk. Uh, Luke Cage is a businessman. I don't know about that. Okay. Um, Hobgoblin is going to become like a viable businessman. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carnage has become a super patriot, and uh, Iron Man has become you know what he was before. The big focus on Iron Man going forward is going to be like the idea that he's going back to becoming an industrialist, mm. uh, becoming the guy who's all about the money, all about the weaponry. Bomb maker. Bomb maker. But the, I, never really, I didn't pick up on it right away, but also an alcoholic again. Awesome. Which is yeah. really a good twist on the character. Yeah. All yeah. the pictures have him holding a martini in his, in his hand now. Awesome. I want to see that. I'm I want to see that. Do you think it's going to end with the end of the X-Men? <sighs> I don't I mean, think so. <laughs> Everything seems like it's coming to a head. Like, I don't know, like, not so much in the other books. I mean, every book has something to do with time, mm-hmm. with time travel and stuff like that. But the thing with uh, the new Avengers and Avengers, you read that book and it's like, it's so dire. Yeah. And it seems so crucial to everything going on. Mm-hmm. Like, I, and, I, I, and there's going to be so much stuff with Thanos. I think they're leading up to some major change, something yeah. major. But that's the thing, like that those are such weighty friggin' books when you read yeah. them, you're like it's they're a thousand pounds each, you know. Yeah. You're just kind of like, wow, this has so many repercussions. But again, you don't know if that's going to go somewhere. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> uh <laughs> and you also have Original Sin ending in one issue, which I feel like is going to be completely major and like major stuff happened in issue 7 from yesterday. Yeah. Which I really loved. I dig that book, mm-hmm. man. I, I think it's uh, it is, is a much smaller crossover, I guess, in mm-hmm. terms of tie-in books. I think there's very few that are involved yeah. in this. Uh, but I think we're, we're suckers for Nick Fury storylines. Yep. We're suckers for a murder mystery. You have a bunch of weird fringe crap going on in it. Um, I don't think the secrets were that great in terms of reveals. Yeah. Uh, 
I think they had some nice twists. The, the Spider-Man stuff that's playing out is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the best part of this was Thor immediately being unworthy. What like <laughs> what did he say? Because it, it was probably something where like, oh, by the way, it's your fault that this happened. Yeah. And he was like, what? So, yeah, in the storyline, uh, Fury's taking on everybody. Like, mm-hmm. he's taking on all the dudes. He's trying to complete some mission. He's trying to go back to... He's going back to the Watcher's place, right? Right, yeah. And so are, like, Doc Midas and the rest of mm-hmm. them. The bad guys of the story. Uh, but, like, he's up against Thor, and uh, obviously he can't go against Thor, mm-hmm. and he whispers in his ear something that we don't know what it is, and immediately you see the hammer drop to the surface of the moon, and he can't pick it up. Yeah. Which is awesome. Which is crazy, and, like, the... Uh, and he's the, gonna lose his arm, too. That's right. And the, the fight was fantastic between Fear and everybody. You know, the way it was just, like, illustrated, it was, it was perfect. Uh, I enjoy how Fury took everybody out. The, the the code to send Tony's armor back to Earth. Oh, yeah. Which is funny. Uh, the Captain America stuff is great because that guy gets his heart broken like left and right. Yeah. Um, Cap just lives heartbreak. Yeah. Um, the Thor thing was crazy. The Hulk thing, he punched the Hulk to the moon. Yeah. Um, and then you saw how um, the orb shot Uatu originally. Yeah. And he was still alive when Fury found him. The uh, well, I don't know if that I don't think that's mm-hmm. the, that's not the yeah exactly that, that yeah. we don't know at all who is the the killer in this who's thing. the murderer yeah, yeah. Um, but the fact that the the was it was it Earth or the Moon well which one that was surrounded by the Watchers the Moon they they're all observing that, yeah it's surrounded by Watchers and I think that's gonna be one of the craziest things we see well I think the the zero issue I think one with with Nova mm. was the one that talked about like why wh- why Watu would want to stop this and like his history with his father and they gave it a big yeah. close history of of the watchers being this community of people um I I don't know what the what this is going to springboard mm-hmm. and I've I think we've both been at a loss for that like I I we know that Winter Soldier is going to move into the position that Fury is in yeah. I mean, that's obvious from the storyline and from the solicitations for his book but in terms of, I think Fury's going to bite it. Yeah. I think that, um, but I don't know where they're going with, like, who the murderer is going to be. You still have a reveal ahead of you. Like, who in this crew of people could it be? Yeah. Punisher? Moon, Moon Knight. Moon Knight? Nah. Uh, couldn't do Moon Knight. I, I don't know, man. It's maybe uh, Black Widow, but she Cause, can't. Because remember that, remember a few, was, mystery. yeah, remember the issue, like, a few, maybe that is, because remember they said, like, uh, Black Widow was, um. He said she's too soft at this point. She's too much like Captain America at this point, yeah. as opposed to like what I am, like we told about Nick Fury. Mm. Uh, remember, remember when like Winter Soldier flipped on uh, Gamora and uh, Moon Knight, Moon Knight, yeah. and blew up the ship. Remember he looked real quick, and they showed like remember he was, he was like putting together that the casings were everywhere, and like there was like obviously someone shooting like a Gatling gun. Yeah, and it cuts over to like a dude in gold armor, sh- like a robot shooting a Gatling gun. Mm-hmm. And they still haven't addressed that at all, so I'm assuming that is whoever this thing, this guy is. Okay, of Some, who this murderer? Is. Somebody in a suit of armor. Somebody in a suit of armor. Uh, Another guy. There's, it's, it's crazy how, uh, it's, it's a really, I think it's a really well put together crossover. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I love it. Uh, I can't even remember the name of the last crossover, which, um, <sighs> wasn't that memorable. What was the last crossover? I forgot, man. But this one was, this one was a great, great. I think this one was a oh, great um, true crossover. Fandy. Yeah, I liked Infinity. Yeah, Infinity, Infinity was Infinity Infinity. was good. Yeah, this I think is just I, I we we love mm-hmm. the mystery stuff. I think that if, yeah. when you have a storyline that's that's core is a mystery and sets up a reveal, it's always awesome. I wish one of the Watchers had like a biker outfit. The American Watcher. I feel like they should have <laughs> <laughs> with a bandana. They should have. I think they all, they all should have been dressed differently. You could have had a biker one. Um, maybe a cop. Maybe a, Maybe a Native American. Maybe that's, what the, that's, that's where they're going with this. That's why the Watchers are coming back. Uh, how, would you have flipped out if instead of the Watchers, it was the Guardians? Oh, yeah. Just leads right into oh, so good. Marvel DC this crossover. Is the, this is the ideal opportunity to do a crossover. I think mm-hmm. we've talked about it before. Like, oh, I yeah, think yeah. It, with all this ultimate reality stuff going on in time, yeah. it's the ideal time to have like mm-hmm. Batman show up. Never going to happen. I know. Never yeah. going to happen. They're too bare at, the, at this point with each other. I think so. Yeah. I think it's just... It's the industry is always in a state of flux, and this is one of those periods where like it's kind of a lull, but it's not. It's not a lull. I yeah. think I think there's more. I I think that the numbers are showing a lull, but I think the interest mm-hmm. is still there. I mean, I think I know what time people are bootlegging, you know, comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think with the way that they offer stuff on even the brick more, like the idea of like Marvel offering, uh, you can get the digital copy of a of a comic, and other companies are doing that too. Mm-hmm. Top Shelf is doing that. I just bought uh a Top Shelf graphic novel. 
20 bucks got me the the hardcore graphic the hardcore the hardcover yeah. graphic novel and for two dollars more i got the digital copy okay so i picked it up and i picked up a book and now like remember remember bacchus from kevin o'neill yes i've always wanted to read it they have all of them for a really cheap price like the whole omnibus online digitally not not in on uh, comicsology no, on uh, on Top Shelf by itself. Really, Top Shelf has a ton of their digital stuff up there now, that and it's all nice. very very cheap. It's yeah. all like three dollars, four dollars for. I'll run. check some of that stuff out. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. I like it. I'm st- I'm starting to dig the digital. I mean, I've been doing it yeah. for years now. Yeah. It's not bad. It's, it's not nice. bad at all. Yeah, you have like all your stuff on a hard drive. But trust me, like I get so because I get I order one comic per month. I get Copra every month. Mm-hmm. Uh. And that book is like you could smell it off the press. Like it just was made. It's like a beautiful cover. Perfect. <laughs> I love. Like I, I still miss the 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 tangibility of the comics. Yeah, yeah. I wish I had the room. I want to see. Like I want to move all my stuff. I want to sell all my stuff and just put everything on one dedicated hard drive mm. with like a big screen, big touch screen. Yes. And that's it. I did. Know? I did a uh, salmon overture on my big screen, and it was one of the most beautiful experiences. J.H. Williams III on I'm freaking sure, a big yeah. screen is awesome. See, that's that's the next level where like you can have the comic reader on your laptop and plug your laptop into like your your oh, yeah. your TV, and that's oh, it. Yeah. And you're reading comics. So good. You're and, reading gigantic comics. And the, like the digital copies they're putting out there are absolutely they're beautiful, beautiful. man. Yeah. yeah. The uh, the Walking Dead one you sent me. It's nice, right? Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Which sucks because like I I forgot to pick it up, but thank you for sending me. Uh, yeah, when I saw it on the list. File, which yeah. Usually it's one of your first, I know one of your first reads. I must have put it back by accident because I had like a double stack. Oh, and I was like put a bunch of stuff back. Oh crap! No, well I didn't. I didn't think they pulled my books. Oh, uh, so I just like grabbed it off the shelf. Yeah, and I I was like, oh, let me mix the stacks, and I think that was like one of the last mm. ones. But it was a fantastic issue, man. It yeah, was man. it was a crazy issue. Um, where do you, all right? So. They're doing this whole thing where it's in the future. It's like, what, like eight years in the future, six years in the future? They even said, I think someone said that it was th- three to four years, mm-hmm. and then they kind of went back on and said, you know, we're not going to say how long. We're going to leave it to play with it later on. I'll say five years. Yeah. You know. Well, Carl was, how old do you think Carl was before this stuff happened? Ten. Ten? Ten or eleven. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, okay, I'll say, I'll go with that. It's like fifteen. Yeah, and now? Now he's fifteen. Now he's fifteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 I'll go with that. You know, and Rick looks like Daniel Bryan. It looks awesome. Uh, but the the reveal in this issue, and this is spoilers for for everybody who reads <laughs> when you Walking Dead. Let me ask you something. Well, mm-hmm. when it was going on, did you pick up on it right away? Yes, I didn't. See, I was I, I was doing two things at once. I was reading it, and I was like, when the last part of it came uh-huh. up, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa what did I miss? It's awesome. Yeah, I went back and did the same thing because it was the the reveal was that now apparently the zombies talk to each other. Yeah, um, which is friggin' awesome. Now immediately. I was like, I really hope that they're going forward with this, and it's not like there's some dudes, like regular dudes, dressed up like zombies, mixed up with this with this horde, like right? The, yeah. meat, the meat suits. Yeah. Uh, if they are going forward with this, and they are becoming more intelligent, they are communicating. It makes the story that much more crazy. Yes, because the dead, uh. <sighs> The comic, as opposed to the TV show, does such a great job of creating that balance between the zombie threat and the human threat. Mm-hmm. The human threat being the predominant threat since the governor story. Right. Where, like, you realize then that, okay, everything, the humans out here are going to be a whole lot worse than the zombies. Mm-hmm. And the zombies have become a a problem that it can be deal, dealt with. So it's a it's a hurdle. Yeah. They even used, weaponized a bunch of them. You know, there's there's different uses for zombies. But right. now, if they come ascendant, that's awesome. Yeah. Because then you're gonna have to deal with like some kind of zombie lord. Yeah, it's a mutant warlord, man. <laughs> right, like a mutant warlord. <laughs> it's gonna be crazy. And like the Nagin stuff, I think this is like one of the builds that he's leading that Kirkman could be leading up to, where it's it's gonna go into more zombie territory. Yeah, because like when I was reading this issue, because we've come, so, what was this like a hundred and hundred twenty something? Yeah, something, right? well, yeah, I think like yeah, one hundred thirty was the issue. Uh, I. Th- I was like, wow, man, this guy always has said, like, he's got years and years of this thing planned. And I'm like, yep. Rick almost seems like he's at the end of his story. Uh, you know, you could do stuff with Creepy Carl. Mm. Uh, hey. Yeah, I mean, like, I think you could do a lot with him. But, like, what do you else do you do? Like, how many times can you have, like, a story of, you know, an uprising, you know, another, you know, community to go against? Right. So the fact that they have kind of a big game changer, if this does, is something that you're sticking with. 
I believe in it. I believe in the idea that this can continue and transform and still be a unique book. Because mm-hmm. you didn't watch the last season of Walking Dead. No. I didn't watch the last season of Walking Dead. I I am going to go back to it. I promise myself I am going to say it. Because uh, I heard pretty good things about the last part of it. Um, I think that show is dangerously in the, in the mode of not doing exactly what the comic does in terms of upping the ante. The reason why we stuck with Walking Dead so much because anything can happen, right? And it goes super far. Same reason why Invincible is killing it right now, yeah. Where it's it's always something major is scary happening. You know what? I uh, I think I missed the last issue. I'll give it to you. Also. When did it come out? Last week. Last week. Yeah. yeah you know what? I did miss it because awesome. I was like, hey, you know what? Let me go grab that, and I completely forgot about messed it. Messed up. Yeah. Real messed up. Um, the last one I read was. The one after Cecil gets murdered. This is the this is uh what's his name? Robot communicating with uh the the aliens, the what they call it, the Kryptonians. The Voltramites? Yeah. Okay. Like them him landing on the moon, uh what's your name lost her leg, you know, from last That was from yeah, that was yeah. the last issue I read. And now she's in labor. Which is pretty bananas. Yeah. Um and, now, and, the, and the rapist comes back in this issue too. Okay. Because she like comes up to uh Invincible. That's crazy, man. It's a good issue. I'll send it to you when I get back. Yeah, home. yeah, please. Um, so it's it's a. Do you think what do you what what if there was a reveal that um like the Millerverse that the, the Kirkman verse is all connected? Well, they kind of play with that every once in a while. Well, uh, yeah. Chu two weeks ago had Poyo their uh their cybernetic chicken uh show up in the Walking Dead universe. Okay, like him with Carl, like the original carnation, like the original team. Okay, from, like the black and white world. That's cool. A little weird. Um. It's all connected. I hope. I hope not. I. I would like to see the Walking Dead untouched as its own little universe. World. Yeah, because because there's the image like the image superhero proper that like the Savage Dragon universe. Let's call it that. And Kirkman you loves know? that. Embraces it. Yeah, yeah. It's the it because it's it was the original image universe. You yeah. know, where like Young Blood existed, Shadowhawk spawn. Uh, 1963. 1963. You had um, uh, what do you call it? Supreme, right? Yeah. And uh, Savage Dragon. They yeah. all kind of float around. But the Savage Dragon universe transcended itself into the Invincible universe yep. very seamlessly. Mm-hmm. And that's like, that's the image. And then you have like Tech Jacket and all those dudes. Um, Guards of the Globe. Guards of the Globe. The uh, were, were, Werewolf. The Werewolf stuff they incorporate. Yeah. yeah. Werewolf stuff. Uh, I think Man. there's a couple more. Wolfman. There's yeah. a couple more. Um, and it's always like pretty seamless. And then you have like your stuff on the outskirts, which doesn't really touch it. Spawn. Uh, Spawn's really not involved with anything Nothing. now. It's just like its, it's own a gothic entity. horror book. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I guess it's always been a. It's Spawn's always been a weird book. I think it's. I think the thing with Spawn is that they, uh, they kind of go with the flow in terms of who they have writing it, and I think they've looked at success of. And I think that I think when he's superhero-y, they can do really cool stuff with him. Yeah, because he's so visually appealing. But I think that they've seen so much success after him with the Sam and Twitch book and yeah. and like having all these awesome writers do like really crazy like Vertigo stuff with him. Mm-hmm. But we don't read it. Is there any interest in Spawn? No. It's not it's just a book that kind of lives on. Do you read it? No. At all. No. See, it's kind of interesting because I feel like I read everything. <laughs> you read everything. And also it's it's one of those things where it's like I you never hear anything about it. No. Like you just know it's still out, it's coming out. I heard about it. Maybe a year ago, when they got rid of Al Simmons, and there was another character, like a, the third Spawn mm-hmm. incarnation since Al Simmons or whatever it was, and there was like a major change, and it was kind of going back to the roots. And then I just never heard about it again, yeah, at all. Imagine if it's some of the best stuff that we're never we're not. I don't writing. think so, man. I think there would be that one guy who would be writing about Spawn, saying like, like you mm-hmm. hear like Chris Simms come out like, hey, Spawn's really killing it right now. You know, you know what the thing is like. I, do you think Spawn transcend? Right, and like we worked the store together, so you know what I'm about to say. Do you think Spawn as a property has kind of went into that weird realm of like Lady Death, yeah. where the books will still come out, but it's just it's just a niche thing with yeah, it's yeah. just a niche thing. The stories aren't like I, you, know. you know, and also again from working the store, there will be people who have been reading Spawn since the beginning, right. who who don't read any of the comics are just going and picking up the description of Spawn. Just one issue of Spawn. Yeah. yeah. It's really nuts too, man. I always kind of want to like check it out. I always flip through them. I don't know what's going on. And I'm like, the art's awesome. I do that with Savage Dragon. Every once okay. in a while, I'll pick up Savage Dragon. I'm so, like, I love Savage Dragon. Savage Dragon was one of my favorite friggin' comics yeah. for years. Uh, it was my favorite. Mm-hmm. And then I just, I fell out of comics and it's, they, he's released, a million issues since then right yeah it's like it's really crazy how like these books are so ongoing like they're they're almost like savage dragon is almost like this generation cerebus 
Oh yeah, where man. like it just keeps going well, and you don't even read it. You never read it. You were, were you a reader of Savage Dragon? Were you big into Savage Dragon? No. See, I was always really mm-hmm. into because it, it was so superhero. It was so far di- far cry from the other right. other image crap at the time. Yeah. I mean, you had like the, like Deadly Duo uh, was the mini series of like Kill Cat and mm-hmm. Mighty Man and like yeah it's Shazam analogies and like all like this weirdo. Yeah. Crazy, and he did such a good job. Exactly what Kirkman does now with creating those really off kilter super villain superhero yeah. characters that are homages to you know yeah. other guys. Uh, I always, I always had like a passing interest too, and I always heard it was great. It was, it's one of those things that you just love it. never like picked fights, it up. Fights God, yeah, lots of death, mole people. You know what I picked up this week, and I caught up on it. I've, ha- I've had it. Uh, evil Ernie, Evil Ernie. <laughs> I got, I read it, Evil Ernie for years. I really thought Evil Ernie was a spinoff of Fright Night. Okay. Because there's evil uh, Eddie on that thing. Anyway, I, that, yeah. um, I, I caught up with uh, God's Dead. Awesome. Yeah, can't do it. Don't awesome. have issue number one. Awesome. I got to get the trade. Is the first trade out? Yeah, they're up to okay. 18 issues already, which I can't believe. Yeah. Uh, 18, 18 came out to, uh, this week. Yeah. Um, I got to pick up the first trade. On really that. good. Well, Mike, it's Mike Costa who wrote um, the, the, the Cobra stuff that mm-hmm. I gave you. Really, really awesome. Uh and then they put out this thing called uh, Guys Dead, Book of Acts, Alpha, and Omega. Uh-huh. And they got like a bunch of guys that got Cy Spurrier to do a story, but they had Alan Moore did mm. a story this week. And it's him talking about uh, his snake his snake puppet. Okay. Because you know, you know what the concept of Guys Dead is? No. Guys Dead is all about all the, every, all the gods are real. Every god is mm-hmm. real, just like American gods. And they... Uh, all the pantheons, the the Aztecs, the Egyptians, Norse, and Greek, mm-hmm. all get together at a table and just destroy the world, and then they all turn on each other and start killing each other. Like Thor, Loki, Odin fighting Zeus, oh, Ares. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah like all that. And they're all like superheroes. And then like you start uh, like a big, st- oh, like the world gets destroyed, it goes into the future, and like other weirdo gods are like poking their heads. Like there's a backup feature now about you know the Indian gods and like Ifrit and Ganesh and, uh. and all these other characters. And then they had like an awesome story about uh was it Hephaestus? Hephaestus, the Greek god. Yeah, the yeah. the 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 Smith, the, black the Smith. Yeah, yeah, Vulcan. Yeah. He like he became this really awesome like like evil weirdo character. And uh-huh. Very good, man. It's really a strange, strange book. Yeah. See, I want to check that out, man. And like, it pisses me off because I'm such a weird nerd that I'm like, can't do it. Don't have the issue number. Don't have issue number <laughs> I know. one. No, I'm the same way. Can't even bother to, to figure out to download <laughs> issue number one. Just like, can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Got to walk away. But you'll try every other image number one. That's exactly. Out there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just yeah. can't do it. Got to walk away. Yeah. Um. And, and I'm a big proponent of like the the image number ones, man. Because most oh, yeah. of them are like, I feel like it's eighty percent hit. Yeah. Yeah. Um and twenty percent miss like um wicked and divine man fantastic awesome. book two that, issues in that's already getting like uh, gonna be uh, optioned out in no time why not it's a great book it's a simple story it's awesome plus like I I think <clears> um <throat> who's your artist on that again Staples I forgot no um uh McKeever not McKeever anyway the guy did Young Avengers with him mm-hmm. and everything uh the art is so crisp so yeah. like beautiful to look at and like Kieran Gillen. That guy, I think he's always been a great writer, but I think he gets better and better with every series he does. Yeah, I think he such a fan favorite too. He gets, uh, I think, obviously like 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 most writers, like when he does his own stuff, it's fantastic. Oh yeah, you know, um, there are there are very few guys that <clears throat> there are very few guys that can do both the superhero stuff in an amazing voice and the personal stuff in an amazing voice. Like Bendis and Hickman are like the kings of that. Yeah. at this point, you know, yeah. like they can write. The crap out of an X Men story, and if Bendis has to do some crime stuff, and um, Brubaker also, I think. Yeah, to a certain degree, I think he's. I mean, in my just because of my personal interest in him has kind of dropped over the years, just because of my experience with uh, Fatal. But mm-hmm. Hickman has done such a variety of stuff. Yeah, and he does. But I think, but he's got that voice, and since, same thing with Bendis is it's he's got that same type of like it carries across all of his his works. Yeah, like dialogue. I think Hickman is probably the hardest working guy in comics right now. Yeah, man. At least, at least output wise. Well, when he got signed by Marvel, he got that image deal also, where he put out Manhattan projects mm-hmm. and like four other projects at the same time that aren't even done yet. Yeah, that's coming out, man. He's because he he's affiliated with God is Dead. Yeah, he was the first writer on yeah. it. Yeah, he's God is Dead, Manhattan projects. Yeah, um, New Avengers, Old Avengers, Old Avengers. Uh, just regular Avengers. He did the crossover? He co-writes Avengers World. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and I'm sure he's getting other stuff. I think they could do another big shuffle on a lot of the books. I now. feel like uh, uh, East to West, East to West, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, a- that sh- I, I want I want to see East to West as like a heavy metal cartoon. Oh my god! Right, that book is so good. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's also the I think it's Dragota who does the art on that. Mm-hmm. Dragota. It looks he's gotten a lot better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks so animated, and the character design for everyone is so friggin' good. That's such a great book. I suggest to everybody. The two crow, the, the white and black crow, mm-hmm. and the uh, I love the um, the judge's goggles with the built-in like cyber uh, mustache sideburns combo. Yep. <laughs> really, really cool. Uh, two things, man. We're gonna wrap it up a little early. Yeah. But one, what do you think of Batman this week? <sighs> yeah. Uh. Standalone issue, it always happens after uh, big storyline. Big story yeah. uh, we have no idea what the next storyline is going to be for Batman, yeah. which is supposedly that kind of that it's called Endgame. Um, I liked it as a throwback to a lot of like Denny O'Neill, like mm-hmm. done in ones. Um, is it too obvious that this guy's the Joker? I don't know. I don't, I don't like. I don't know if that's what they were like. The Meyer being the exact opposite of the Joker, and like him being put in Joker's cell and hiding his face. There's no record on this guy anywhere, mm-hmm. and like I could just see him, this guy ripping off his face, and him being Joker at the end. Of the just like the re- the reveal. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's Cause, interesting because all of his done ones, like the last his his what he was doing for a while was his done ones were all that Harper Row stuff. Yeah, like it all leads up like. Remember uh, they did that one issue where he gets right after the the core of the owls. Yeah. Where out of nowhere, like he gets you know brought back alive by Harper Row, and then they don't do anything with it, and they do another right. done in one. Yeah. He's he's obviously using that stuff, but this felt like it shouldn't matter. But I think it's definitely gonna it's matter. gonna matter. Yeah, yeah. this story is gonna matter. I feel like it was very delicately put together. The Joker theory is really interesting. It may just be like a red herring, but yeah. like I could, you could see where it goes. You know, um, especially also like the little nuances that were drawn into it. Yeah. Um. I love that dude's art, Mateo Scalera, man. He's okay. Kill it, really? Yeah. Ah, oh, I don't that. think his. I don't think this was his best work. I've seen other like yeah. much better cool stuff. With him. I like that. I want to see like I want to see Snyder team up. Like Capullo's fantastic. I want to see him do something with Jock. And, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, Jock um, is in another level now, though. He doesn't. He barely does comic book stuff anymore. I know, man. I he does movie posters. All movies, and they're all beautiful. Yeah. They're all fantastic. Um, see the way too, man. Let's talk about the uh, the orgasm of the week as far as nerd shit goes. The Silent Hill reveal. Oh man! Right? Uh, did you watch the video that I sent you? I, it's I, awful. I, I, it's, <laughs> it, I watched that. I watched. Um, I read the whole thing behind it, where Sony put out a teaser for this game called PT, which is actually a gameplay teaser for the new Silent Hill. Yeah. So if you have PS4, you mm-hmm. can go online and go there to the store and just download this mystery demo. Right. Which is crazy because like they got the idea. Obviously, it's the same idea for Phantom Pain. Remember when they released the yes. uh, the mystery teaser and you didn't know what it was? Yeah. But the reveal on this was that it's a friggin' new Silent Hill game done by Hideo Kojima. Silent Hills, High Silent Hills, <laughs> done by Hideo Kojima of you know writer director of Metal Gear and friggin' Guillermo Yo, del Toro and Norman Reedus, starring Norman Reedus. <laughs> which you know what, icing on the cake. Right. But you know what, I, I was really excited about. Did you ever play the Room? The Silent Hill no. the Room. That was one of my absolute favorite, but they look like they're going back to the idea of like your hub being like your your very scary apartment point of view, yeah. first person, and like weirdo portals around the room. Yeah, I say I watched the I didn't watch the whole demo. I watched the 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 the, the gameplay. With yeah, yeah, like yeah. The reactions and stuff, and I was like, it really doesn't get creepier than walking down a dark hallway. Oh man, with a flashlight Yo, in a video game. I'm telling you, know? you, like the room was terrifying. Yeah, terrifying. It had the scariest hub world. Those, the first two Silent Hill games mm. were so terrifying. Yeah. And the crazy thing is the first one was on PS1. I remember kind of going back to it not too long ago, and I'm like, ooh, this looks terrible. terrible yeah. It's almost like, because your eyes adjust to all this new technology when you have it, that when you go back to that old stuff, it's like everything is one polygon. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, also at that time, it was like, uh, the first Silent Hill was really old. It came out around the same time like Resident Evil 2 was out. Yeah. And yeah. that was the only horror, the way of looking at horror. Silent Hill was such a far cry from all the stuff. Mm-hmm. It was creepy. It was super adult. Very scary. Yeah. It didn't yeah. force feed you the storyline. You really had to do some work on it. Mm-hmm. And it really was one of the moodiest, you know, games ever, ever put out. The first one was very difficult too because you had to figure a lot of weird shit out. I liked the them beginning. all. Yeah. I think I liked every single one of them. Um, Two was fantastic. Two was because that's the one with the, with, uh, the murdering husband. With the dude, 
I think so. I think the first yeah. one was the uh, was the girl. It was the missing? It was the missing kid. Yeah. The second was the truck driver with the missing kid. Yeah. Who ends up being he murdered his wife, and then the third one was the little girl with his private detective, and then the yeah. fourth one was the room. Didn't play the room. There was another so one too. There was another yeah. one after that that wasn't that good. Apparently, I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. It was uh. It's still like it still had all the right things going for it. But this one's supposed to be like the scariest. And also there's another survival horror game coming out that um I think it's just called like the house or something like that. Yeah, I think I heard about this. And too. it like the poster art looks freaking awesome. And that's supposed to be like, hey, survival horror. Horror, horror. are you ready? Horror. You ready, survival horror? <laughs> uh I can't wait for that, man. Yeah. I mean and it came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. No one knew that Guillermo Toro would be working with. Watch the uh, the reaction videos on I did. it, too. That's what I saw it on. It's so it's, ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah, I don't know. No, no. Every no, no. single one. No. Um, I, I had the same reaction, too. Like, as soon as I, I watched the end of that thing, I was like, wait a minute, Norman Reedus. It's just a Norman weird reveal Reedus. at the end. I, yeah. I, I think it's a good idea putting actors in your in your games, because yeah. why not? You need recognizable people. You're going to get some attention to it. But it's also very Uncanny Valley. Did you ever play uh, the Willem Dafoe game with um, the chick? I forgot her name. Juno? Yeah. No, I played the game. <laughs> I, I played the game before it, the one they they put out. Um, uh, name mm-hmm. escapes me. Same same company, the okay. same type of game. Where I was like, you know what? I'm never gonna play this company, these company games again. That's I, funny. I liked it, but it just it's it is so unnatural. Like okay. it's the most unnatural dialogue I've ever seen in my life. All right. But I know what you're right. talking about with Juno and uh, Defoe. Uh, and before we go, like I just be I beat Tomb Raider this week. Right? Right. Wasn't it great? It was awesome. Le- the day after I beat it, a little bit pissed off that the new one's gonna be Xbox, Xbox. One exclusive. But you never that, that never yeah. sticks. That never sticks. Never know, man. Uh, I am fully invested in getting a PS4. Same here. Uh, there's a new Dark Souls game coming out, so yep. I'm, I'm on board. Uh, everything about that system is gonna be awesome. WWE 2K15. That stuff looks nice. <laughs> really good. That yeah. stuff looks that that's a real screen, New Orton. Did you see the uh, Did you see the clips of uh, the the roster? The empty roster roster boxes. No, all I saw was the just the character models of a few of them. There was like a demo of gameplay, and it only has four filled in. So you see like Cesaro, Golda, Cena, and Orton as the only guys they revealed so far. Yeah, yeah. And then the screen is just a grid of empty boxes. Thousands of people. Yeah. So there's, I feel like everybody's going to be in this game. <sighs> Old Hogan, new Hogan. All the Hogan. Old Sting, new Sting. All the HBKs. All the HBKs. All the Stings. All the Stings. I think it's going to be awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Is Mark awesome. Marrow in it? I hope so. Me too. If not, you can make them. Yeah. That's one of the things about their, their games that has become really weird is the fact you can they allow you to upload your own character creation. So you mm-hmm. always have, like, I Bray Wyatt and all those dudes on my stuff. AJ Styles. I got AJ, AJ Styles, Styles on yeah. my All right. Let's wrap it up, man. This has been another episode. We'll see you next week. I'm Rich. I'm John. Good night. <laughs>